everybody. Welcome back to Blue Label Racing and welcome to Amir's actual Sunday Cup car. The other one that I had in here uh, that we ended up chopping was just too rough and not worth fixing up. And he coincidentally ended up finding shortly thereafter a uh, slick top car that doesn't have a sunroof. And bonus, it's a checkmate, which is just cosmetically fun. It's something that I think is interesting. Um, this one actually runs and drives. The other one did not. Um, the, the catch here is we're pretty sure that somebody rebuilt this engine and rebuilt it poorly because it, uh, it burns coolant. You can smell it. And also when you start it up for the first time, it kind of has to chug through all of that coolant that's in the motor before it starts. Um, it's, it's pretty bad. It runs pretty rough. And the car is cosmetically in pretty bad shape too but we are putting it up in the air and we're gonna do a little look over and see what goodness we can find underneath. I'm just gonna point out, it actually has a cat. It does have a cat. <laughs> this one has not been that's, molested. That's worth something. At least in this, oh wait, no, it has. Look, it's been cut and re-welded. Somebody did actually steal this one and somebody else had to put a new one in it. <laughs> you know, this one doesn't look half as bad. It doesn't. I think it's because it was driven at some point instead of sitting in a yard. Still lots of oil pan gasket leak, lots of oil leaks, lots of fluid leaks of every sort. We've got a motor mount right here that's totally separated, squidged out, lovely. This isn't great right here, not having a, a lower section to the front clip. That's kind of just broken and missing. And all this is gonna move too. Wiggle. All right, show me. All right. Oh God. Yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> what is what is this? All oh, the exhaust is held up by what is that? <laughs> Dental floss. <laughs> Practically. That's fun. Still got a spare that's not mounted properly. That's just flopping about. These tires, primo. Those are some uh, star fires. It's because the wheel's moving this way when you stop. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's some pretty typical first gen wear. That's pretty pretty extreme though. This car, when you're going over bumps in the parking lot, it feels like the entire thing is gonna fall apart. It's really, really bad. Probably every joint, bushing, ball joint, all of it. It's all worn out, it's all gotta go. Um, but it was already gonna go because we're building this as a Sunday Cup car. So right. it's gonna get the power flex adjusted, uh, power flex caster adjusted, rear control arm bushings for the front, um, power flex camber adjusted front ball joints. Uh, that'll take this whole uh, control arm and push it out so we get a little more track width, more camber, more caster. Um, power flex bushings at the rear with the big sway bar. Um, of course, these terrible worn shocks are gonna get new uh, BC Racing coilovers at some point. This car is gonna be totally transformed and I'm really psyched for it. Also, this is a facelift car, unlike mine, which is a pre-facelift. So he has the updated tail lights, uh, three-spoke steering wheel and slightly different looking bumpers. Somebody went and had a little off-road excursion here, destroyed that fender liner in the front clip and ripped off the spoiler off the bumper, tore the bumper right there. These cars get used and abused, and these days, even though they were, you know, modern, compact, um, you could call them comfy luxury classics back in the day. Uh, today you can get them for, like this one, about 500 bucks in pretty bad shape. And if you know what you're doing, you can turn it into a, a pretty nice, fun little car. Under the hood, the motor actually looks really clean because somebody went through it recently, but doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Uh, I just put this battery in here a few days ago because the one that was in it was not starting it. Not really a whole lot to see under here. Oh, no, aside from yeah, yeah, aside from these strut mounts that are totally torn out. Those make a horrendous noise when you turn. 
these motor mounts, just like that one I picked up at the junkyard yesterday, these sag and fail. These are full of hydraulic fluid and they rupture and you can see it like drain all over this chassis leg here. And then the motor sits down like another half inch from where it's supposed to. This is unfortunately a uh, CVT car, but we know how to manual swap these. So we'll get that taken care of. And we have a couple transmissions sitting laying around. I actually really like the interior of this. Yeah, this has the, this has the like gray door panel set up that is, I think, fairly uncommon. It's like a light gray door panel with the anthracite trim. That combination, I don't think I've actually seen in person before. And it had the, the whole seat to match. Yeah, just the document, mm -hmm. checking the mileage. That's right. It's not due. <laughs> 203,000 miles. I wonder if that's original. No way. Uh, oh, well, oh, EP? it's got an EP on the dash. This transmission failed. <laughs> you know, we haven't actually test driven this enough to know if it shifts. I'll bet you it's stuck in first gear like they all do. Probably. Probably. It shoots itself into gear. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. That's funny. Wow. I think the goal for this, even though it's already blue, is to uh, wrap it a color that you've got in mind. Yep. It's going to be different than yours, but mm -hmm. still blue. Yep. It'll look really good. We got to do a lot with that bumper, though. Yeah. I didn't realize it was cracked. It's in rough shape. But it'll look good. But you're going to retain the silver roof and mirrors, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that looks really good. We're pretty confident at this point that this car's motor is not usable in its current state. We can see all the white smoke blowing out the exhaust. We can smell it, it smells like coolant. But it's always good to double check your work. So what we're gonna do here is do a compression test and a leak down test just to put um, numbers to the symptom that we're seeing. And it'll also give you guys some good insight into how we condemn blown up mini motors. So. Let's have at it. What we've got here is a gauge inserted into cylinder one. We're gonna do this for all four of them. I've got the spark plugs removed right now. And this gauge is gonna show me how much pressure each cylinder can build under its own power, just cranking it over, not running it. So I'm gonna stand here, point the camera at the gauge. I'm gonna have probably George over here uh, get in the car and crank it, and we will see what we can produce. Ready? Oh, oh, hold on. Sorry, my uh, my tool is not behaving. Ready? We've got 100 PSI on this cylinder, which I can tell you right off the bat is not quite enough. Ready? We got about 100 again. A little, maybe say 110. I guess the first one was 110 too. Ready? Only 90 on that one. Fairly consistent, but uh, still not enough. All right, and for the last one, uh, this is cylinder four, go ahead. Worst one yet, about 80 PSI. So this could be worse. Uh, we did get some compression out of these cylinders. Obviously I wasn't surprised to see that because I knew that it ran. Um, and it has to have some compression to run. It just runs really poorly. So um, we know that the engine doesn't produce a whole lot of combustion. It means the uh, pressure that it's building up is escaping somewhere that we don't want it to. So the next thing we're gonna do is a leak down test to determine where it's going. And I have a suspicion that when we do this, we will find that a lot of the pressure is escaping into the cooling system because if coolant is getting into the engine, then gases from the engine will also get into the coolant. So let's begin. This process is a little more labor intensive than the compression test because we're not using the engine's own battery and starter. We're using compressed air that I've got running from the shop. 
We've got a pair of gauges here. This will read pressure going into the engine and the pressure that the engine is retaining. Uh, and I'm looking for a, a difference in those two values to determine uh, how much of a problem there is. I've got the wheel off here. I've got the wheel liner out so that I can access the crank bolt in there. And I've got the crank turned so that cylinder number one that I'm starting with is at top dead center at the very top of its stroke. And uh, what we're gonna do here is put compressed air into the cylinder, look for how much of that pressure that the engine is able to contain or where that pressure comes out, which I'm betting will be out of here. And we're gonna do it slowly because there's, uh, there's potential for, if I've got that cap off, there's potential for coolant to come bubbling out and uh, I don't wanna to make too much of a mess. So let's do it. All right, cylinder one performs quite a bit better than I would have expected. I'm putting what's practically 100 PSI in there and it's retaining 84% of it. Um, this isn't ideal still, but it is more than I expected. I thought there was gonna be more leakage. Uh, I can tell you from just standing and listening around here, there's, there's none coming out in the, uh, in the cooling system. Um, I suppose I should have that open as well. Um, if anything, where I hear it, it might be actually in the exhaust. No, actually, there's, there's nothing there either. I do hear just a little bit of hissing, but it might actually be, well, let's see. Oh, yeah. Yep, there it is. So I've taken the oil dipstick out, and I can actually hear the hissing in there. It's very quiet, you may not be able to hear it, but I can hear air come out of that when I pull the dipstick out, which means that a majority of the leak that we're seeing there, although it's not huge, is uh, going into the crankcase, and the way it gets there is by going past the piston rings, which kind of answers two questions. Um, if there's a significant leak at the piston rings, that means it's also not gonna make that much compression when we do our first test, so that kind of confirmed our theory. Um, at least on this cylinder, it doesn't look like the coolant is getting into that one. It looks like it's just worn out. Looks like the motor's probably got a lot of miles on it. Maybe it wasn't maintained very well throughout its life. And uh, the piston rings are just worn. So let's move on to the next one, see what it looks like. As we move from cylinder one to cylinder two, I'm looking at the uh, orientation of the pistons as they go through their travel. Um, I've just done piston number one, cylinder number one, and I know that the next ones in the firing order go three, four, two, sequentially. Um, two, one, three, four, two, one, three, four. That's the firing order for this engine. Uh, so as I turn the motor over down here at the crank, I'm gonna be looking for these two little rods that I've inserted here to go up and down and tell me where they're at in their travel. And as, uh, as number two comes back up, I'm gonna see these gauges do a little, a little jump as the cylinder, cylinder two reaches the top of its compression stroke. Oh yeah. Oh, I can hear it. Oh. Yep, you hear that? Yeah. So cylinder two appears to be the one that's leaking into, uh, yeah, I think for, <laughs> remember how I, how I said I was gonna do that slowly? <laughs> I think for our demonstration purposes, we've definitely discovered the problem. Now at this point, we've definitely like condemned this engine and we know that it needs to come apart and be rebuilt. Um, but just for shits and grins, we're going to continue on and do a leak down test on cylinders three and four and see if anything else surprising doesn't jump out at us. Just because it's fun. Yeah. All right, cylinder three, see what happens. Oh, this one's pretty bad. Oh, do I hear? No. Oh! Interesting, okay. 
yeah, so this is this is fun. So pressure going into cylinder three is escaping into cylinder four, which can also be a sign of um, a head gasket leak, but it could, I suppose, also be rings if the rings are bad enough on both of them. Well, I think it's probably just probably just head gasket in this case because there's no crankcase pressure coming out of number three. <laughs> that one has a pretty bad leak down. Yeah, what is that? 40 40 ish percent of the pressure is leaking out into cylinder four. So these two are actually working against each other at times. Not good. Cylinder four. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty bad. Oh, and I think. So the, uh, the whistling is coming out of cylinder three and the cooling system. Man, this motor is just all sorts of screwy. That's a, that's a very bad leak down value right there too. Over 40%, almost 50%. Popcorn, anybody? You can see the, uh, the coolant bubbling down there. This is one of the perks of being a mechanic and knowing that you can confidently get a car back on the road that's been, you know, potentially neglected or at least just blown up, mistreated. Um, you can buy a car for fairly cheap in, in this instance. I'm pretty sure we got this car for about 500 bucks. And uh, somebody supposedly has done engine work to it in the past. The cylinder head looks really clean and there's no uh, oil leaks up top. So I think somebody already did a head gasket job and maybe they just got the torque sequence wrong or they didn't torque it down enough. Um, maybe contamination, who knows, who knows? We'll find out when we get in there. I am gonna tear this motor down and see if it's salvageable. Um, I know that it also needs rings. So I'll be re-ringing it, but that's gonna happen at a future date uh, probably just going to pull this motor out and then put the one in that I'm building for it. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how we condemn, uh, engines. Uh, here at Blue Label, I do a lot of work on minis because that's where my background is. And a lot of the people who know me came from mini when I worked at the dealership. Um, usually second gens. Second gens blow up a lot more frequently than first gens, but, um, first gens do still you know, they're getting to be 20 years old at this point and they've been sold three, four, five times. And some people just don't know the kind of maintenance that they need, which is not, not to be unexpected. So with that, I will leave you. Um, that's all I've got for tonight. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate all the support I've gotten recently. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe because then you'll get notified. Uh, there's actually a bell. Make sure you ring the bell to get notified. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.